this video is going to be about making piston rings or a more uh, realistic it's it's about how to heat treat piston rings because there's plenty of videos out there on making piston rings and it's standard uh, turning and uh, I'm not going to run you through all of that I have some piston rings that I'm going to heat treat and I'll show you how that's done and there was an article it was in Home Shop Machinist February, February 2018 and it's a uh, Ted Hansen, it's a very good article on heat treating piston rings and, and how to uh, finish them. And I've been using this method ever since 2018 and it works out really good. The hard part about heat treating piston rings is if you stick them on a little pin and hold a torch to them, you can't heat that exactly the same speed all the way around. And that's very important because if it gets too hot in one area, that pile will give and then that's it you know the thing is not going to be round and the way this is done it makes them perfect and I've tested them and uh, by putting them in a cylinder and, and uh, putting some uh, lapping compound on them and it's perfect they stay perfectly round so I'm going to do the inside diameter first that should be deep enough I'm going to work that out with drills. So this is the piston that the rings are for and what I want to do is measure the depth of the ring land and make that uh, the, the inside of this ten thousandths difference in other words larger than the actual diameter of the ring land so you have to measure that pretty close And the reason you're given a 10 thousandths clearance, because you want 5 thousandths clearance underneath the ring on both sides. So that's 10 thousandths total. So the rings are 40 thousandths by 40 thousandths. So here's how I figured this out. The piston diameter is 1.103. And so the inside land is is 90 thousandths less than that or 45 thousandths on each side because the ring is 40 thousandths by 40 thousandths and I want to leave 5 thousandths clearance. So you double that and you come out with 90 thousandths and so this is the inside land dimension here from there to there. Okay so then the ring ID has to be uh, that dimension plus 10 thousandths which gives you 1.023. And so that's the ID of the piston ring. So I bored out the ID, and actually when he wasn't looking, I bored out the OD. <laughs> so I'm gonna part these off and we'll show you how to, to, to slot them in heat treat. I should mention is the OD is three thousandths oversize because of the way I cut the rings. I don't break them. I actually cut them with a, a very fine slitting saw. And you make this a little bit larger diameter to make up for that. Another thing I want to mention is when you see the dimensions of a piston ring for the piston, it isn't really that important. One thing you want to remember is, is the width and the, and the thickness should be pro approximately the same. And you have to spring it over the piston. Now this is one that was in the plans for that engine. And I looked at it and I says, wow, 
There's no possible way I can get that on the piston, but I'll try it. So I made the piston rings, and you can see that they're perfect. There's no way you can put them on the piston because they won't spring out big enough, they'll break. And I broke one, and it was for that engine. So I went down to a, a smaller piston ring, and it worked perfectly. I try to make most of my piston rings with a, with a, a square. In other words, the thickness and the width is the same. And the size doesn't mean anything, it's the fit. As long as it fits good, and it has to fit good in the groove in the piston, and it has to fit good in the cylinder. And the way you can tell if it's fitting in the cylinder is by looking how it wears. And if you take it out after you've run it a while and look at it and you see a, a dark spot in it, it's not hitting there and it's not making good compression. Okay, now to size these, I made up a little fixture that holds the rings, and now you can sand the both sides of it, and if it's a, if the hair over, you can take off a few thousand. You don't want to be taking off 10 or 15 thousandths, but uh, you can take off a couple of thousands this way pretty easily. Really should go in a figure eight pattern, which is kind of difficult. I usually rotate this a little bit to, to be in different spots. Now once we get this to thickness, Splitting saw, as you can see, this is very fine. This is eight thousandths, and uh, it works out pretty good for me. I'm just going to put both rings in there like that in the vise. Okay, they're both in there. I'll put in the slitting saw. Now I've got the two rings slit, but these rings here, I'm gonna put in the, the heat treating oven. This is the little mechanism that he shows in that article that you put the rings in. And what you do is you put the gap, put a piece in for the gap, and you put that, maybe I might put them in there first, because these are very small rings and you put the gap in it. One other thing you wanna do is put a little piece of paper in here. And what the paper does is it burns up all the oxygen when it catches fire. And that'll uh, keep the rings from getting too, too scaly. And I usually put it in right in with the rings. Just a little piece of a paper, that's all it takes. Tiny little piece. Now I'm gonna put a stack up of washers on here so it's just barely holding that closed, but not putting a lot of pressure on it. Just to keep them flat. What I do is I put this on a hot plate, put it on high, throw uh, this little insulating blanket over top of it, and let it get really hot. And then I'll heat it with the torch afterwards. So I heat this up until the, the, the thing will kick off because it's overheated. Then I heat it with a torch until I get it glowing red hot.
that's nice and red hot. You can see it's still glowing. And what it does is it heats the rings up slowly. So the whole rings heats up all the way around at exactly the same temperature. So it works really good. And it's a little more work, but it's, uh, I like this method. Okay, so it's cooled off. We're gonna take it apart here and see what the rings look like. Now we'll take these out of the container. And you can see it's, it's pretty black after being heated up red hot. There's the rings. Whoop, where'd the little pin go? Notice the paper's gone, there it is. That's the thing that's in the gap. You can see the gap is still there. So it's got a little spring to it and hopefully they're perfectly round. And the next thing I'm gonna do is put them in a little uh, lapping fixture that I made for these rings and uh, check them out and see how, how round they are. This is another process that you can do that showed in that uh, article. It's lapping the rings. And what you do is you make a cylinder. It's exactly the size of your uh, engine cylinder. And you use aluminum or something soft. I mean, you could use brass, but that's pretty expensive. So aluminum is probably the best thing to use. And you make a plunger and these two washers that just fit in there. So when you make this, you want a shoulder that's a little wider than your piston ring. So your piston ring will fit loosely in that slot. Then you put one ring in at a time. Put the two washers on it. The nut on it to hold it tight. And you can see that still springs. You put it in your cylinder Now you can see you can pull that up and down inside that cylinder. Put some lapping compound in there. This is 500 grit. Now one thing you can do is just do a little bit like that. Now that's only uh, probably 50 plunges through there. And now I'm gonna pull that out of there. And I wanna look around the outside of that ring and see if it's polished all the way around. And that'll tell me if it is polished all the way around that it's act actually perfectly true. And uh, you, can, you can see the wear that the uh, compound makes on it. And if there's a gap you know, a spot that looks darker or lighter, then you just do it some more. But uh, this one looks pretty good. Let me wipe it off here. It's pretty hard to show on the video, but when you take this ring out of that little uh, container, I call it the little oven, it's, uh, it's black all the way around. And if you lap it, you can see that there's no black left on it. It's, it's hitting all the way around, even on the tips. And the tips are the most important. When you, when you do it with a torch, usually you'll, you'll see that right in here is where it'll be black still, and you have to do more lapping. But that, that one with 50 strokes, it looks 100%, it's perfect. Now I'm gonna put the, uh, the other ring in there and do the same thing. Maybe you can see this a little better. I think you can see the shine on it all the way around with it off of the, the tool. I inadvertently did both of them without thinking. Uh, it, I should show you the black. This ring has never been lapped because it didn't work. And you can see how black it is. So it would be pretty obvious if that didn't hit because it's black like that. And you can see the difference in the two. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the pistons on the ring, the, the, the rings on the piston. They got a nice gap in them. 
see how that works out. Now you see that will turn, oh, make nice sure fit. they fit in there nice in the, the groove. This one goes on the bottom. And there they are. And when you put those together in the cylinder, you want to leave three or four thousandths end gap on this with a feeler gauge. And that's just about what I come out with. So that's it. Uh, like I said, this is mostly to show you how to heat treat them more than to turn them because there's plenty of videos out there on how to turn rings. And it's a simple turning process. But this method has worked out great for me. Because if they don't fit right, you don't get good compression right off the bat. And there's nothing more aggravating than having an engine that won't start. And compression is nine times out of 10 the reason. It doesn't have enough compression. So you make this fixture and this, this simple fixture here so you can lap them for each engine. And it's, it looks a little difficult, but it really isn't. And uh, it's worth the time. If you do, do it right the first time, you don't have to do it a second time. So, so thank you for watching. And uh, like I said, this wasn't about turning piston rings, really. It's more about heat treating. And it's more about this article. Once, once I started following this article, it, it was really easier to make good piston rings. And as you can see, that has the uh, lapping tool also. Very simple to make, and, but you do have to make one for each size cylinder. But I try to keep my uh, cylinders the same. I, I do a lot of engines and, and uh, I try to keep the, the pistons between an inch and an inch and an eighth. And that saves them. Sometimes I've made them with an inch and a quarter, but an inch and an eighth works out really good for me. So I, I have the tools for some of them already done. This is Home Shop Machinist. So the date was January, February 2018, and this is a great article. It's, it's short, to the point, and uh, easy to understand. And I've been making my rings ever, ever since then this way, and they come out perfect each time. So if you, you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.